Welcome! This episode shows how to fix a leaky or faulty anti-siphon or backflow valve in your outside water faucet. So we're having a problem with the anti-siphon or, or backflow valve on the our outside faucet which is stuck. As you can see, water gushes gushes out the through the port of the anti-siphon valve on the top side and significantly reduces the, the water pressure in the hose. So we're going to take care of this. We're going to uh, open this up, inspect the valve, see if there's any dirt or debris in there. Considering that our house is 25 years old, we've used this faucet an awful lot through the years, so it's probably worn out at this point. So we'll be prepared to uh, replace this component part. As an engineer, I think it is a good idea for you to understand how things work and why they are required. Most county and municipality billing codes for relatively new housing areas require anti-siphon valves and outside faucets to ensure your fresh water supply does not become contaminated. Without these valves, it's possible that you could encounter a situation where your garden hose is submerged in a dirty or contaminated water puddle and your neighborhood housing area experiences a water main break with a sudden drop in water pressure. In this situation, without an anti-siphon valve, dirty water could be sucked back into your home's pipes and contaminate your water supply. It's also important to note that prolonged anti-siphon faucet leakage can damage your foundation and flood your basement. In addition, I'm sure that a lot of you have backflow devices installed within your sprinkler systems, which are also mandatory county and municipality requirements. They serve the same function as anti-siphon faucet valves perform. Okay, we are now ready to continue with this repair effort. To remove and replace the anti-siphon valve components, you only need a straight leg or regular screwdriver and a pair of channel lock pliers. Step one of this process is to we, uh, pop the cap of the uh, siphon cap here. and we want to pop it off. We don't want to break the plastic. You know, it's plastic like this can become brittle over the years in the sun. And we can feel it coming up. I'm just being careful with it and taking my time. Okay, so we got it off. And step number two is to gently remove this the uh, plastic cap here and we'll do this by unscrewing it I think this screw is unscrews yes and it does I was just guessing and it unscrews and there's our seating mechanism here and the open port and the washer here doesn't really look worn doesn't look like there's a lot of really uh, more wear and tear in there but keep in mind there's been a lot of fluid flow that goes over this through the years and we've had it for 25 years and I suspect we probably might as well just go ahead and change it because I had stopped the, the flow problem yesterday and it came right back today so I suspect we need a new mechanism altogether. So we're gonna do that at this time. Take this down to Home Depot and see if I can't uh, find a replacement. I'm sure I can. In addition, prior to purchasing a repair kit, it's a good idea to check the top of your anti-siphon valve housing to ensure there's not a gap here. If so, this could be causing the leak. In this case, carefully tighten it and check for leaks again. Prior to leaving for Home Depot, I checked their website for a repair kit. Unfortunately, the kit that I needed was not in stock and Home Depot could not deliver it to any of the four stores near me for 10 days. After checking Lowe's and True Values websites, I also learned that they did not carry the brand of kit that I needed. Fortunately, Amazon Prime has my kit for only $6. Since they could deliver it in two days, I purchased it from them. Nevertheless, I still needed an immediate fix. My wife uses this hose and faucet twice a day to water her flowers in our back berm and water her flowers and plants on the patio. Without water in the heat of the summer, they'll die. 
consequently I had to fix it now. While waiting for the Amazon Prime kit to arrive, I removed the anti-siphon components from the faucet on the opposite side of our house that we rarely use. If the Amazon kit works as expected, I'll purchase two more kits for a total of three kits for all of our outside faucets. After removing these components, I compared the two anti-siphon plungers. As you can see in this close-up photograph, the faulty plunger on the left has significantly more wear and tear than the other faucet's plunger on the right. With this noted, let's complete the replacement. Okay, so I've returned up my component parts in hand and I'm going to install them at this time. I'll replace the, put the plunger back into the, the plastic housing and get in position and carefully screw it in so I don't cross thread the, the plastic threads and we have men now in this case you want to tighten this just a little bit not too much once again it's plastic so just give it a feel and then replace the cap the anti-siphon cap back on and it's snapped into place okay so we've got it on let's see if it works And we've turned the water on full force. Hose over here. And as you can see, it works perfectly. So, okay, so it's been fixed. This concludes my anti-siphon valve repair. At this time, I'm moving on to my next project. You're more than welcome to follow. In addition, if you have a great project that you want to post on my YouTube channel, email me some pictures and a brief description of it. If it qualifies for the Let's Fix It Right standards to help others, I'll interview you over the phone as a guest do-it-yourselfer, produce a high-quality video, and post it on my Let's Fix It Right channel. For the year following this posting, I'll share 50% of the potential YouTube benefits with you. If you have any subject matter requests or recommendations, please contact me. All of this said, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel, follow my projects, and save a bundle of money doing it.